All right, welcome back. So in the last video, we had a look at HTTP and how it works as a standard of communication. And in this video, we'll take a look at the kinds of HTTP messages that exist and kind of how they're structured and what they mean. So we have two types of HTTP messages. We have a request message which we see in front of us uh, on the screen right here. And we have a response message, which is what we get back after we've sent a HTTP request. So that's how HTTP works. We send uh, HTTP requests and we get responses in return that contains information about whether or not the request was successful, what type of uh, data we're getting in return, and a bunch of more information. We're not going to go into all of those details now, but we'll have a look at how they're structured and the most important parts. So let's take a look at the request first. So here we have a example HTTP request. And as you can see, it's made out of four parts. So we have the method, which is get. We have the path, which is denoted by a slash here. That means the root of the HT of the websites, I'm sorry. And we have the version of the protocol, uh, which is either HTTP 1.1 or HTTP 2. And then we have the headers, which contain information about the HTTP request. So let's just focus on the first line for now. So the first line is made up of the method, the path, and the version of the protocol. And the method is usually a verb um, that implies what we want to do with the request, what kind of operation there is. And there are several verbs that we could use but in this case, we are using get. And usually when you use get, it's because you want to retrieve a resource. Now, what could a resource be? Well, it could be an index.html file. It could be an image. It could be some data in form of JSON. Um, really, it could be just about anything. And the path denotes kind of where you want to try to get this resource uh, from the domain. So if you want to go, in, in this case, the host is developer mozilla.org. So that means that we are go going to fetch uh, or get whatever is at the root of developer mozilla.org. So if that makes sense, then when we send that request, we will get a response in return and the response is also made out of four, four parts, uh, but the order of them are slightly uh, stocked around. So here we have the version of the protocol first. We have the status code, which implies uh, it gives you information about uh, the request uh, and what status um, it has, whether or not it was successful, uh, whether or not it could find the um, thing that you were looking for and there are many different uh, status codes uh, that we could go into here um, but I think it's better to just go over the basics for now so status code 200 means that um, the request was okay so it was successful and you can see that on the right hand sides where the status message says okay so that's basically how it works. We send requests, we get response messages in return. Now, you might be wondering, well, I've been using the internet a long time and I've never even seen an HTTP request. And that's because everyone who uses the internet have their own personal mailman that makes these requests for us and sends them along. And that is the browser. So the browser abstracts all of this away from us 
and makes it so that as a user, we don't have to write out these tedious messages. The browser takes care of all of that. And that kind of makes sense because otherwise who would use the internet? It wouldn't be feasible for everyone or it would be feasible, but it wouldn't be practical for everyone to write out their own HTTP messages every time they wanted to navigate to a web page. Imagine going through a web shop and having to manually type out the HTTP messages for every item that you want to see or every, every page that you want to navigate to. But uh, we can take a little bit of a look on how this works. So here I have the Google website open in Mozilla Firefox. And I'm going to open the developer tools by hitting Command Shift I on my Mac. And I'm going to go to the network tab. Looks like I'm already there. And I'm going to hit refresh on the page. And on the left hand side, you can see a bunch of HTTP responses when we refresh this page. And if we go and take a look at the top one that says 200 and get, we can see down in the bottom left half a bunch of information about the request response, the HTTP response, I'm sorry. So we can see that the request URL was google.com. We can see that the request method was get. We can see that the status code was 200 OK and the version was HTTP 2. And then below there we have all of the HTTP headers that was sent with this response. So what happened was our browser constructed a HTTP request for us, sent it over to Google. So if we go back to the overview here, we sent a get request to Google at the root. And we received a response back with the HTTP protocol, the status code and the status message. So if we go back to Google, you can see here we have the status code 200. We have the status message, which says OK. And we have the version, which is HTTP slash two. And Google has formatted this a little bit for us. It's not in the raw text format that we saw in um, in uh, the overview over at Mozilla. Sorry, I shouldn't say Google. Uh, Firefox has formatted this uh, for us. So that's a brief overview over how an HTTP message looks, how it's constructed, how the browser kind of takes that and magically sends it for us every time we navigate to a page or try to get a resource like an image. The browser will create the HTTP message, send that along and receive a response in return. And then the browser will also know what to do with that response. But you still might wonder why this is important for us as developers. Well, it happens all the time when we are writing uh, either front end code or we're writing servers on the back end. We need to be aware of these uh, nuances and these um, HTTP messages because they are at the heart of what we are doing when we are, for example, making APIs, because an API is just a interface serving up data. And we need to be aware of it when we're on the front end. And maybe we have some sort of resource that uh, needs authentication, where you need to have some sort of token to access it. It's really, really beneficial to know the HTTP protocol and know what it does. And I can't stress this enough. I really, really believe that. So for now, we're going to leave it here. 
But I urge you to go to Mozilla Developer Network and start to read a little bit about the HTTP protocol and try to fill out your your understanding um, because it's not going to happen right away. It's not going to happen in the course of a 10 minute video that you get this and it's all going to click. But uh, hopefully we're going to be able to spend a little more time with this and we'll be able to see in greater detail how it all ties together once we get to look at servers and APIs and all of that. So thanks for tuning in. I'm going to leave it there for now. And then we're going to get lots of opportunities to practice this later.